What's going on? This is Kareem from DJBooth.net, and I'm here in the lab to give you guys the review of the brand new Roland DJ505 Serato DJ controller with built-in TR drum machine sequencer. So if you guys remember last week, we reviewed the Roland DJ202, which is the smaller little brother compact machine, similar to the 505. And then we also reviewed a few months ago, the Roland DJ808, which is the huge four channel footprint controller for the Roland brand. And this bad boy sits right in the middle of the two. It's probably gonna be their most popular controller because it doesn't have such a small compact and cramped footprint as the 202. And it's not so big and bulky as the almighty DJ 808. And it's not so big that you don't wanna bring it with you on the go. So the 505 sits right in the middle of that range, sits right in the middle of that in terms of features and in terms of footprint and in terms of usability and control. So the Roland DJ505 again is the middle controller. It comes at the middle controller price point as well. It also comes bundled with the full Serato DJ software and it comes with the Serato DJ pack that gives you the full effects kit. It also gives you the full Serato flip which allows you guys to play your different cue points. And it also comes with the full Serato pitch and time feature. So that way you can pitch up and down your different hot cues so you can tone play. And it also has that plugin so where you can do ultra pitch, different things with your speed and tempo of your song and change keys as well. So it comes fully, fully featured, has everything you need right out of the box. The first impressions and build quality, the first impressions is that it's a really nice footprint, nice side size. It is pretty light overall, and that means that it's made of entirely plastic, except for the metal top jog wheels that you guys see here. And that's one of my gripes with the unit. I wish they had at least a metal face plate or maybe a metal backing or underpinning, but as it is, it's an all plastic build, and it does feel like a rather thin style plastic as well. So the build quality of the actual outer casing of the structure is a little bit questionable to me, but it is sturdy enough to withstand your normal everyday use. You can take it with you on the go and play out with it, but I would definitely suggest buying some type of case or protective bag so that way you don't have any damage when you're taking this bad boy with you on the go. The setup is really, really easy. You have all of your input and output options on the back. You have your microphone input. You also have your two Two RCA inputs so that way you can use this in standalone mixer mode and you can also plug in your turntables or your CDJs into this and you can use these inputs for Serato DJ because it is Serato DJ DVS ready but you need to buy that additional DVS kit from Serato DJ in order to activate that feature you also have your RCA outputs you also have a booth TRS output, you have a MIDI output, and then you also have XLR digital outputs as well. And you do have separate volume controls on the face of the unit for both your master and your booth levels as well. The microphone input does allow you to route some effects of Serato DJ through the microphone, including your effect, such as echo, reverb, and gate and it works really, really nicely, and it's really cool to see that feature included on this controller as well. You have your TR drum machine that can be used in standalone mode too. You don't need to have Serato plug this in, just like with all the other controllers. You just plug in power, and you are pretty much ready to go. It does have a power cord and a power lead that you have to plug into the back, and it also has the USB connection as well to plug this into your computer. When using this with Serato DJ, all you have to do is plug in your USB connection and download the the latest and greatest Serato DJ from the website and that will work perfectly on Mac and for a Windows machine you just have to download the drivers upload the drivers into your computer then plug this bad boy in with the latest edition of Serato DJ and you're pretty much ready to go so let's just get ready plug this bad boy in and go over all of the features and functions that we have in the Roland DJ 505 all right everyone so here it is the Roland DJ 505 and as you can see, it looks like a lot of different controllers that are in the Serato DJ brand that have a two-channel configuration. But you can see all the way to the top, we have the TRS sequencer sampler by Roland. And this is what makes things a little bit more interesting with this controller than with other controllers in this kind of range. So first up at the top here, you have the TRS. We'll get to that at the end. 
Next up at the top, from the top down, we have your FX knobs. You have your three FX knobs with three different FX on buttons, and you have your beat selector as well. You use these for your Serato DJ effects. You have an FX1 and an FX2, and it can control all of your normal FX routines that you guys see in DJ controllers of today. Next up, you have your channel assigned for your effects, or you can assign it to your TR or sampler as well. One, two, three, four, and TR. This is for your FX1, and you can do the same for your FX2. Next up, we have your pitch sliders, and they are rather small here, right above your jog wheels, but they're larger than the ones found on the DJ202, but they still aren't as long as I would have liked to see them, but you can do some accurate pitch blending with these pitch sliders that you do have here and they don't feel very cheap they do feel like they do have good quality to them nice resistance to them as well next up you have your key lock and tempo range button on this side you have your vinyl button which can turn the operation of your jog wheel from vinyl mode to scratching to just a straight jog wheel mode meaning you're nudging the track forward and backwards to get an accurate pitch experience and blend Next up, this button can also be used for slip mode, meaning you'll be able to do all of your different scratching routines or you can do different things with your pads and the track will still continue to play underneath. Everyone knows about slip mode by now. You have your shift button so that way you can get to the secondary functions of all the buttons that you guys see here. You press shift in order to get to the white highlighted feature underneath the button and the button is normally used when you press the button which is corresponding to the top portion. Next up is your pad and transport section. All the way down to the bottom left, you have your sync, sync on off. Then you have your cue and rewind track. You also have your play pause button here and stutter. These are hard, hard plastic. They have like a metalish feel to them, but they are very hard plastic, but they feel really good. They're very responsive as well. Next up, you have your pad section here. And in the pads, you have your hot cue, cue loop, your roll, roll slicer, your TR and pattern functions, which you will be able to use both these pads here for your TR drum machines. And you can use this as well. And you can also use your sampler sounds instead of your TR sounds as well. And you can play them back using the buttons found here, or you can use your sequencer at the top. Next up, you have your sampler button, so you can access your samples, and velocity, meaning you can control them via the velocity that you hit them with when you're launching the clips. The pads themselves are RGB backlit, and they feel really, really nice to the touch, and they're very, very responsive, and they're very, very tight, a nice, tight, rubberized pad. They really, really work nice, they feel good, and they definitely are made for drumming. Next up, you have your loop section. You have an auto loop here, so you can quickly jump into your loop. These are hard plastic buttons, by the way, and they're all backlit as well. Then you have your loop shift. You can shift the loop backwards or forwards, depending on if you have the shift pressed and when you wanna go through the loop shift. And you can also double your loop or half the loop. You also have your manual in and out buttons as well, and you can store these in your different slots. Next up, you have your parameter buttons that will allow you to change the different parameters of your roll, slicer, and your different loop as well. Next up, you have your jog wheels. These jog wheels are very high resolution jog wheels. They have metal top to them. They don't have any type of give to them, which means they're just touch sensitive, they're not pressure sensitive, but they're very, very responsive and they can do mostly all the scratchings that you guys need to pull off right here on the jog wheels. You have your deck three button and deck four button here, so that way you can layer your deck controls, so you have both deck one and three on your left and deck two and four on your right. Next up is your mixing console section. All the way at the bottom, you have your crossfader. The crossfader does feel better than the crossfader found on the DJ202. It definitely has higher resolution. And you also have controls on the face of the unit for your crossfader curve, which gives you different curve readouts. You also have reverse function. And you can also change your different channels, line one and two, between your PC, your line, or your phono, which you have on the back. You also have a microphone control at the bottom and the front as well. Your two headphone jacks are both at the bottom front and they also have a volume control knob for the level of that as well. Next up you have your two line faders. They have a lot more resistance to them 
and it has the LED meter in the middle so that way you can get all of your sources lined up nothing's clipping in the red you can cue your sampler here or cue what's in your channels playing here by highlighting these cue buttons and that way you can cue what is in the cue session using this knob here for your cue or master mixing and then you have your booth level volume knob and your master level volume knob as well you have your TR sampler volume knob this would control the sampler and the TRS volume output and then you have your three band EQ these are full kill EQs the knobs are nice and rubberized here for the EQs feels good to the touch and really nice to manipulate them during your mix you also have your high low pass filters for both of your channels as well and you have a trim knob all the way at the top for your gain levels next up you'll be able to load your tracks using these buttons here or you can sort your tracks by BPM or key when you press shift in these load buttons then you can use the knob in the middle in order to go and get your tracks and scroll through all of your different folders and navigate through your playlists and you can go back out or you can add and prepare easily by using these buttons as well and you can also sort by song or artist by hitting shift in these keys all right last but not least we have your TRS drum machine and the drum machine up here has many many different features and functions more features and functions are found on the 202, but maybe not as many features as found on the 808 at the top of their range. The first knob that we see here is able to adjust the tempo of your different patterns that you already have playing. And you can also hit the sync button so that way you can sync it with the track that you currently have playing as well. Next up you have your scale, so you can change the scale of your different playback. You also have a shuffle button, so that way you can shuffle between the different patterns that you have here. You also have a nudge button, which allows you to nudge your track forward or backwards. So say if you have a track playing and everything is not completely synced and locked up, then you can use this nudge feature along with the knob here in order to get it right on beat. See how it gives it just a little nudge backwards or forward depending on how you turn the knob. Really helpful and useful if you guys are using different songs that are not quite synced perfect in Serato. That way you can get them right on with your drum machine when you're about to play. Next up you have a mute button. This allows you to quickly mute the different sounds that you have here. Instead of using volume control knobs for all of your different sounds as found on the 808, here they have a mute button function so that way you can cut out all your bass drum, all your snare drum, all your hi-hats, and so on and so forth. Next up you have a TR record button. This allows you to instant record and to record your different patterns as they're going on the fly. Next up you can change your different instrument kits. This has the drum sounds for the TR-808 and 909. The 606 and 707 sounds are coming soon. And you'll be able to alter all of these sounds by using your level, attack, DK, and two knobs found all the way to the right. Really cool to use these features because you really change up the sounds in the different patterns that you guys are playing. And you can also check your different patterns by pressing the pattern button here. It's really cool and easy to use. I'll give you guys a really quick demo so you can see how this all works.
you guys want to edit your sound, you have bass drum, snare drum, closed hat, open hat, low tom, high tom, and your different sounds are here. And then you have your Serato sampler sounds all the way over here. So if you guys want to use your Serato sampler sounds instead of the sounds that you have in your TR-808s and 909s, 707 and 606, you guys can just use these buttons here. You can edit those and use those on the fly as well. So in conclusion, the new Roland DJ505 is an excellent controller that's gonna tick a lot of boxes for a lot of different users. It's not really small and too crunched and compact like the smaller controllers out there, and it's not super, super big to where you wouldn't wanna bring it with you to take it with you on the go for your gigs. So it sits right in that middle range and in that middle price point range as well, and it also has lots of functions and features as we just showed you. At first, we have this TRS drum machine right here at the top with editable sounds, meaning you can change the decay and all the fluctuations in that sound. It has the TR-808, the TR-909, the 707 and 606 drum sounds are coming with an update shortly, but you have all of the features and functions that you would need in your TRS at the top, and it syncs perfectly with your Serato DJ experiences. It also comes with the full Serato DJ software along with the Serato DJ toolkit, which gives you Serato Flip, it gives you pitch and time, and it also gives you the effects pack so you have all of your Serato DJ effects unlocked right from the go. It also has that standalone mixer function and it has the inputs that are Serato DVS ready, meaning you can attach your turntables or CDJs to this and you can scratch out and rock with it on Serato DJ using the standalone mixer option on the DJ505. It also has the outputs as well, many outputs to have you covered, including XLR, TRS, RCA, and of course, that MIDI output as well. It also has that microphone input that allows you to route certain Serato DJ effects through it, such as your high pass filter, your gate, and your echo. And it also has them low latency jog wheels with the metal top, so that way you can cut up really nicely on this and it really scratches very, very well. You also get the full four deck experience with this. Even though you only see a two deck layout here, you can layer these different functions so that way you have all four decks of your control. On the downside, it's made of mostly finish feeling kind of plastic material. So I'd rather see a lot more metal in the design and construction of the controller. And it also suffers from the same plague of most smaller DJ controllers. And it has these short pitch sliders here. They're accurate enough to do your accurate mixing, but they're not accurate enough to dial down to your very, very minute, accurate, accurate pitch bending. But they're nicely implemented and you can definitely use them for your normal everyday beat matching. So for more on the written review, you guys can get on over to www.djbooth.net slash DJS, or you can click on the link at the top of this video description. Make sure you guys subscribe so that way you can get more videos like this in the future. And as always, thanks for watching.